and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israel publishes a new report that unveils connections between internationally recognized terror organizations including Hamas and the boycott, divest and sanctions movement against the Jewish state. In a rare statement, the European Union voices grave concern over the Islamic Republic's ongoing ballistic missile launches and tests and calls on Iran to immediately halt activities that deepen mistrust and destabilize the Middle East. Iran's chief judiciary, Ayatollah Sadek Amoli Larijani, responded to the EU-established Special Purpose Vehicle for Trade, declaring that Iran will by no means accept Europe's humiliating conditions and will not accede to any demand at the expense of opening a small economic waterway such as Instex. Israel's Ministry of Strategic Affairs published a new report revealing internal connections of internationally recognized terror organizations including Hamas and the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine and groups that support the Boycott, Divest and Sanctions movement BDS, against the Jewish state. According to the report titled Terrorists in Suits, a recent study examined 13 BDS organizations and found 30 activists that have passed in current affiliation to terrorism, 20 of whom were even incarcerated on terror charges with senior positions in BDS organizations. The report, conducted by the Research Division of Israel's Ministry of Strategic Affairs, claims that the Palestinian terror organizations view BDS as an additional tactic to use for the annihilation of the Jewish state. The report further points to a web of global interconnections between BDS and terror organizations, with more than 100 connections that were identified, including joint campaigns, manpower and financial assistance. The report also revealed that the BDS organizations listed in the report receive millions of euros in funding from European states and philanthropic foundations. In response to the findings of the report, Israeli Minister of Strategic Affairs Gilad Erdan said the terrorist and boycott organizations are united in their goal of destroying Israel and see delegitimization and boycotts against Israel as a complementary means to the armed struggle. Minister Erdan also called on the European Union and the sponsoring countries of the entities mentioned in the report to reconsider their steps regarding the legitimacy and funding they grant BDS organizations. Now in other news, the European Union voiced grave concern over the Islamic Republic's ongoing ballistic missile launches and tests and called on Iran to immediately halt activities that deepen mistrust and destabilize the region. In a rare joint statement of EU member states, the European bloc accused Iran of continuing to undertake efforts to increase the range and precision of its missiles, together with increasing the number of tests and operational launches, which according to the EU, these activities deepen mistrust and contribute to regional instability. The statement further condemned Iran's malign activities, including Tehran's policy of meddling in several Middle East conflicts and recent attempts to assassinate the Iranian opposition figures that live in Europe. While the statement also criticized Iran's provision of military, financial and political support to non-state actors in countries such as Syria and Lebanon, the 28-member bloc hailed last week's creation of a special purpose vehicle called INSTEX, short for the Instrument in Support of Trade Exchanges, which effectively allows European companies to maintain business relations with the Islamic Republic, despite international sanctions that were imposed on Tehran by Washington. During last week's announcement, French Foreign Minister Jean-Yves Le Drian released that the new trade mechanism will allow willing European companies to pursue licit trade with Iran, particularly in the areas of health and agri-food, and urged other countries that seek to preserve the 2015 nuclear deal with the Islamic Republic to support the European endeavor. Cette société vise à permettre aux entreprises européennes qui le souhaitent de poursuivre un commerce licite avec l'Iran, en particulier dans les domaines de la santé et de l'agroalimentaire, ces secteurs de première nécessité pour la population iranienne. 
It is important to know that while the Instax was supposedly created without preconditions, so long as Iran abides by the multilateral nuclear agreement, in its statement, the European Union added an expectation, according to which Iran must swiftly implement all elements of the FATF action plan that aims to combat money laundering and the financing of terror. While the FATF, which is short for Financial Action Task Force, blacklisted the Islamic Republic of Iran for posing a concrete risk to the international financial system and its continued financial support to internationally recognized terror organizations, an EU diplomat underscored that Iran's compliance with the FATF is not a precondition, rather, it is viewed in Brussels as a strong expectation. Meanwhile, in Tehran, the Iranian government welcomed the creation of the EU-established Special Purpose Vehicle. Iran's Deputy Foreign Minister Abbas Arakshi said that the Islamic Republic will also set up a mirror company to counterpart the Instax mechanism and that ongoing discussions are being held in Brussels to implement the necessary measures. That said, in response to the EU condemnation of Iran's malign activities, the Ayatollah regime released a dismissive statement in which it called the European allegations baseless and non-constructive. Contrasting with the Iranian government's welcoming position, a top Iranian judge announced that the Islamic Republic would never accept the humiliating conditions set by the European Union for Instex, which is intended to evade U.S. sanctions. Iran's chief judiciary, Ayatollah Sadek Amoli Larijani, stressed that after nine months of procrastination and negotiations, Europeans have created a mechanism with limited capacity, not for exchanging money, but for food and medicine. According to Ayatollah Larijani, the first strange condition is that Iran should join the Financial Action Task Force, while the other is that the country should enter negotiations regarding its ballistic missile program. The chief Iranian judiciary, who is appointed by Iran's supreme leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, declared that Iran will by no means accept Europe's humiliating conditions it will not accede to any demand at the expense of opening a small waterway such as Instax. Now back to Brussels, where a meeting of Arab League and European Union foreign ministers, which intended to set up an agenda for a summit at the level of heads of state, failed to find common ground on moving forward. While EU foreign policy chief Federica Mogherini was explaining in a joint press conference why they had failed to agree, she was interrupted by our co-chair, the Arab League Secretary General Ahmed Abul Ghait. Uh, we didn't come to agreeing on uh, a full three, four, five, seven pages declaration together, also because, as you know, uh, we are complex organizations on both sides. And uh, uh, I can speak for the European Union, but I know that it's the same on the Arab League side, even agreeing on internal. If I may, if I may interrupt I know about, here, if I, know I may enough. interrupt here, more complications on the European side rather than the Arab side. Uh, I would say rather <laughs> the contrary, but this is an issue for conversation. The two main topics of disagreement between the Arab League and the EU pertains to illegal immigration from the Middle East and North Africa to Europe and the fact that the Arab world is considering to normalize relations with Syria's president Bashar al-Assad. While hostility to Assad has long been an issue on which European and leading Arab states agreed upon after Damascus was suspended from the Arab League in 2011, some Arab countries are now pushing to readmit Syria a move most EU countries are not willing to accept. C'est un débat interne à la Ligue arabe, mais je pense qu'on n'est pas dans une situation aujourd'hui de reprendre une relation normale avec la Syrie. On voit bien ce qui s'est passé depuis des années. Il faut d'abord une solution politique et que l'on prenne vraiment le chemin de la négociation politique. C'est pour ça que nous soutenons tout à fait le, le travail du nouvel envoyé des Nations Unies, M. Pedersen. Je pense qu'avec lui, qu'on doit essayer de voir comment aller vers une solution politique avant d'imaginer toute autre situation avec Damas. Amid major objections on the matter, however, Austria and the Czech Republic are more open to the question of restoring ties with Assad, claiming the move would help return hundreds of thousands of refugees back to Syria. Thank you for watching us. Keep praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan, have a Erev Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.